Uh, so today I would like to present to you uh, my research entitled Formulation of Order Ownership Assignment in Area V2 as an Optimization Problem. Now my research uh, deals with the problem of occlusion. Now occlusion may not be an everyday word for you, so let me demonstrate what occlusion is and why it is important. So now you can see me over here and I am occluding the screen over here. However, if I move back here, I am now occluded by the screen. So occlusion is basically uh, what is in front and what is behind uh, of an object. And it is important to know what is the, uh, the order of which, in depth of which an object is in order to know where, where an object is and what an object is. Now let me proceed with the explanation. Uh, please have a look at this uh, image. There are two ways in which you may perceive this image. The first way is a dark square occluding a light grey background. Another way you can perceive this is a light grey window occluding a dark grey background. So these two uh, ways that one can perceive the uh, image is shown in this, these uh, two different uh, examples. As you can see, uh, in the first example, the dark grey uh, square is, has a uh, larger uh, depth of the value, and it coincides with being closer to the viewer. And similarly, uh, the light grey window is, has a higher depth of the and this coincides with an object being closer to the viewer. Now in these two um, examples, the border that we perceive here, outlined in yellow, is owned by the occluding object. So in the case of the square, dark grey square, the border here in yellow is owned by the dark grey square and we can uh, we can show this by, uh, by drawing arrows towards the occluding, occluding object. And similarly, uh, when the light grey window is perceived, this yellow border is owned by the object. In this case, the arrows point outwards. Now, does the brain actually uh, carry out border ownership assignment, border ownership calculation? Uh, uh, neurophysical uh, physiological experiments have shown that there are object site selective neurons in the brain in area V2 in the visual cortex. Now these, uh, some of these, these neurons respond strongly to an edge in its receptive field if the object is located on a specific site. Now this uh, image <coughs> uh, represents uh, the two different stimuli uh, shown to uh, the, the uh, neuron, the single neuron. Now the red circle is the classical receptive field of the neuron. And as you can see, uh, in both of these cases, the pattern inside the red circle or the receptive field is the same. Light gray and dark gray. Light gray, dark gray, light gray, dark gray. However, the actual the whole image shown is different. Now this uh, neuron responds uh, strongly when the light gray square is to the left side of the neuron, of this receptive field. But if there is no object on the left side of its neuron, of this receptive field, the neuron will respond less, not as strong. So you can see there's a difference in response. Now this is the, these are the, this is the response shown in spikes per second. So this difference shows that there is a possibility that V2 uh, calculates or assigns uh, borders in, in, uh, in the brain. Now, so the next question is how, does the, how do these neurons calculate uh, 
or assign body ownership. As you can see that there are no cues inside the receptive field to calculate, which means it uses information from outside its classical receptive field in this area, for example. Now there are several models that have been uh, uh, presented to date uh, to try to explain, to try to reproduce the response of this, these neurons. And the primary objective of these existing models is to reproduce um, the phenomenon or the response of these object side selective neurons. And uh, you can uh, group them into um, three uh, different groups according to the neural, uh, well, the kind of neural connections it uses. It, well, it, it, the hy it hypothesizes. Uh, the hy hy yes. And so we can uh, group these into three different types first, lateral connections, second, feed forward, and third, uh, feed, uh, forward feedback. Uh, I will not go into the details, but for example, uh, the for the lateral connection model, uh, you can see that uh, it uses a very complex uh, neural weights to calculate uh, all the uh, connections, the weights. So, um, the, the approach that we took look is different from the existing approach. Now the approach we took is a deductive approach. Now why a deductive approach? Uh, first let's start with the phenomenalistic or the inductive approach. Now <coughs> uh, this approach is well you start off by presenting a hypothetical neural me mechanism and you work within that frame to produce to reproduce the phenomenon or the, the neural, uh, the, the response of the neurons. However, on the other hand, uh, a deductive approach starts off with presenting a theory and then deriving the neural mechanisms as well as the algorithms to uh, implement it. Now, a deductive approach has been taken previously in area V1 and this has uh, resulted in well, famous theories such as the Gabor uh, sparse coding and the Gabor function. Uh, however, in area V2, there has not been any research at all, uh, which has taken a deductive approach to solving the problem of, uh, let's say, border ownership. So, how do we approach this problem now? Uh, first, let us, we have to define a suitable energy function for minimalization. So let us take a look at the uh, relationship between uh, depth order and border ownership, or BO. <coughs> now depth order, as you can see, is, is uh, well, three-dimensional information. So we can represent this, for example, x, y, and z, uh, z, as a scalar field, let's say, phi. And border ownership, BO, we can re represent this, you can see arrows here, we can represent this as a vector field. Let's put, let's say, for example, E. So we have phi here and we have E. And we know that there is some sort of relationship between phi and E. So what is this relationship? For example, this looks like a uh, differentiation integration relationship. In other words, if you differentiate scalar field, you will get a vector field, a conservative vector field, and if you integrate this conservative vector field, you will get a scalar field. And now this relationship can be uh, expressed in this uh, equation here, E equals to the um, nabla phi, <coughs> and nabla is the uh, differentiation, uh, represent differentiation. All right. So, now we have established a possible relationship. Now, how do we solve the equation? For this, uh, the uh, previous relationship to hold true, the vector has to be a conservative field. And for a conservative field, all points, 
all spatial points, uh, the, the rotation or curl of uh, conservative the field has to be uh, zero at all spatial points. And, and the equation for curl is can be expressed in terms of partial differentiation of its y and x uh, components, respectively. Now to visualize uh, the rotation or curl of a vector field, you can take a look at this small uh, example here. Now these arrows represent the vectors, and if you put, uh, let's say, a windmill at this point, point zero zero here, it will rotate up to in the anti or counterclockwise direction, and this is uh, this. Uh, this is a, a positive curl. So curl is not zero at this point. So we have a <coughs> um, an equation, or we have a, a function to which uh, calculates rotation or curl, and we want to uh, make sh make sure that every point there in the vector field is zero. Every point of rotation is zero. So we. Uh, to formulate a an energy function to minimize curve or rotation. Now, how we uh, derive the other rule is using the steepest descent method, and we will uh, we use up the uh, the result uh, is a <coughs> update rule, which is in terms of the x and y uh, different. Uh, partial differentiation on the x and y uh, components, which can be represented or rewrote re re into this one line. Now, based on this, we then uh, created a model. And, <coughs> and uh, created a simple model. Now, <coughs> uh, first we uh, we had to assign initial vectors to uh, the shape. Now, here we have two examples, two different shapes, and to for initial vectors we use uh, vectors pointing to the inside of L junctions, and this is because the inner side of the L junctions is more likely to be perceived as an object, or an occluding object. <coughs> but uh, these two images look similar, but there's one difference here. This, uh, this uh, area is absent from this uh, image. However, at this enclosure here, you can see that the vectors point in the same direction. So if we... Um, implement our model, the update rule, to this image, uh, this, well, this image, uh, what we get is the evolution of the body ownership signals and depth of the fine to make this points. As you can see, the vectors will slowly realign themselves point towards the occluding object. And at the same time, you can see depth order will change according to how we actually perceive the object. <coughs> now let me run that one more time. First of all, these two vectors point in the same direction, but however, if you run that, in the first example, these vectors remain in the same direction. However, in the second example, the vector will realign itself. It will turn around and face this side, which is the side of the including occluding object. Now we can also derive neural weights uh, from <coughs> the, the update rule. And we use this by, uh, this is the update rule, and we replace the spatial, uh, the, the uh, partial derivatives 
with uh, my discrete uh, Gaussian, the partial derivative of a discrete Gaussian function. And from that we derive neural weights. And in the next slide I will show you uh, the neural rates of a neuron with a selectivity uh, to the right at position 0, 0. Now our model is uh, the, the characteristics of the neural weights of our model is on the left side here. And the darker these vectors represent the uh, selectivity. Uh, this is the uh, strength of the weights. Now we can use the same uh, method to compare it with an existing model, with Lee's model, which has 23 parameters. Our, our, parent, uh, our model only has one. So let's take a closer look. First, let's look at the direction. You can see direction point upwards. Right, down, down, right, up. So you can see that our mod the, the characteristics of the neural weights of our model and Lee's model are qualitatively similar. However, the advantage is that our model only requires one parameter, whereas Lee's model requires 23 parameters. Let's take a look at close look at Lee's model. You can see very, very complex, 27 equations, 23 parameters. It speaks for itself. However, let's take a look at our model. Simple. Three equations, one parameter. You can be the judge of which might be a better model. Now let me close off. Uh, the conclusion that this is the first study to approach voluntary assignment in area V2 as an optimization problem. So this is how uh, the scene was before our model was uh, introduced into this world and perhaps after maybe this is the first of um, maybe many similar uh, models in the future. And the advantage is that our model presents a clear mathematical objective for area V2, which is minimizing curl. And we've also demonstrated that neural networks can be derived from this update model. So I'll, I'll uh, leave you with this update rule, simple update rule. Thank you very much.